Hello chickens, welcome back. It's Sunday and it's me, Angela, here again today. Now, I'm not giving you another flip through of the journals or anything, but I have had one or two people ask me about how I made these little goodies. And I did say to you that I would talk about how we are going to um, use these little goodies in the mini journal. So I thought, I would share that with you today and I've called it um, journal jewellery. So journal paper, paper journal jewellery, let me say. All right, so that's what we're going to do. So yes, um, this journal was an absolute blessing to make. I had such a lot of fun and those memories will always stay with me. So I've got it here to remind me. Um, now I'm just going to take this tassel off here, which is just on with a lobster clip put the journal to the side here and then um, talk about these so yeah this is a very easy way to decorate not only a tassel but your journal as well you can make like a bookmark with these sorts of things you know instead of like a ribbon you can add make something like this and uh, with with these strings and bookmark where you are writing um, I've added them to my tassel and really it was just again using scraps of things that I had with fabric etc. So I'm going to show you how I did this today and then I'm going to show you um, what my plan was for this. Alright so what do you need? I'm going to just put this to the side over there. Um, I've just grabbed some scraps of my fabric. Um, so this is was from my uh, garden story fabric bundle but any fabric scraps you have you're not going to see that much of it so just grab some scraps it'll go with whatever journal theme you're using and then um, some circles um, I've got this baker's twine here or butcher's twine um, I've got my punch to cut out my circles and I've got uh, my crushed olive uh, ink for distressing and some eyelets you'll need some eyelets okay so that's all we need for this and it's a great one that you can mass make um, and you can decorate them in any which way but for me um, I'm using what I have from the kit so for the large journal and to make these ones here I have used these circles here so you would need two for each one of these that you make so we will need four all right and then i have this is from my large journal kit then this one here is from my mini journal kit that i launched this past um friday so if you haven't seen that um this is my mini journal little mini journal that i shared the flip through of here it is um on friday so go and have a look at that video there it was the one just before this and i give you a complete flip through of this with a kit and everything but i want to add to that today and um, this is the envelope page one of the envelope pages and it's got these eight little circles and you're going to need the eight circles today all right so those are the two pages that i have used so it's really easy to cut these out and i haven't done it yet i haven't done it yet so i'm just going to um take my do i need the ruler we'll see right so i have printed mine um with outer border but I, I just check on your printer because that does affect the width and I'm using my two inch punch here just to cut these out so have I got it right yes so we just want to do that quickly decide on the ones that you want to use so I'm just going to go with the ones across the top here all right so that's those and we'll put that aside okay so we've got our four there like that and any four i think i'll use those two well i'll make a person on each and a non-person on the other <laughs> and then all we need to do is just give that a little bit of distress ink in whichever color you choose so I've, I've quite enjoyed using this crushed olive with the garden story it sort of brightens it up and because the collaboration um i was working on bright and shabby i've sort of not used my vintage photo as much 
I do use it. I mean, in fact, if I use it on here first, a little bit, I just want to show you. I have tried this. Do a little bit of that. Yeah. And then I've gone with this over and I quite like the effect. So you can try all sorts of different things. Right. So there we have that done. Then all I do is pretty simple. Okay, so we wanted is choose um, fabric. So let's go with this green first of all. I'll go with the green and I'm going to use this one. Then I just take my fabric glue like this. Now I'm trying to think, did I? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fabric glue. And I folded this in half. Now, the only reason I'm folding it in half is because I wanted to see the edge of the fabric on both sides. Because you've got the picture there as well on both sides. All right. So um, let me just take that bit off there. It's the salvage. So that's easily done. And then you want to just fold this in half enough to yeah, that'll do it. Okay, so nails are handy for this sort of thing. <laughs> Give it a, so I know where to glue to. And then first of all, I'm going to glue the fabric together more in the middle than anywhere. But um, you don't need too much. You don't. Now, are there are two ways you can do this. You can either do uh, what I did over there and um, stitch it or you can just glue it if you're just going to glue it put a little bit more glue especially in the center bits all right then just fold that fabric over like that there we go right and we can cut that little snippet off there for use for another that would make a great tab fabric tab so we've got that there now we want to choose we'll put this one on i think first and again glue this down now i i am not going to stitch this one but i'm going to talk you through how what the the difference in steps are if you are okay so i've got glue on there and i'm placing it so that there's even amounts of fabric all around all right give it a little press Okay, now, if you're wanting to do like I did and sew around the edge there, which is literally um, <laughs> electric machine, but I used it uh, manually because you've got to keep turning it um, and go slowly. But you don't have to do that. If you are wanting to sew it, this is the point that you would go and sew around there. All right. Um, because if you sew it when the other one's on the back, it's not a guaranteed that you're going to get it in exactly the same place. So I went and stitched the one at this point and then stuck the back on. OK, but we're not going to do that today. What you need to do now is um, we are going to just decide on the little extra edge that you want. And probably what is that in a measurement for you? In millimeters, you're looking at about three mils, and in inches, you're looking at about an eighth of an inch. Okay, there or thereabouts, you decide how you want it, and then it's just getting your eye in and very slowly just going around. Thank goodness for these scissors, <laughs> they, they have got a spring that um, releases it up again. So you just take your time, and I'm not going to do them all. I'm just doing one. Um, well, like that. Yeah. And you just keep going round. Well, there we go. And now at this point, you want to decide on the, the one for the back. And I think I'll put this one here. Now, you want to remember that that is the top. So if you want to use a little clip or something, something, something... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pokey tool and because I let me just get the other bit here. Um, because I'm going to put an eyelet in here, this doesn't matter, but I just want to get it straight. So this is how I want it for straight. And then 
that's just going to show me where where the upright point is on the other side all right so let's just that's the only reason so i know that that's that's straight and i can get that right there now so that i don't have one straight and the other like this kind of thing okay and then you want to just take the one that's going on the back get glue right to the edges here especially if you're not sewing not so much if you are sewing. If you are sewing, then you don't need to get it to the edges. I'd avoid the edges. Right. And then we want to just move that in place. Right. There we go. All right. So there we've got that in place there. Right. And then um, I'm going to let that dry. I take my little eyelets and this is why it's not opening I'm opening the wrong side <laughs> I'm going to just grab one of these little eyelets these are we are memory keepers eyelets so I'm just going to grab one of those put that over there and then uh, where that little hole is is where we want to get our eyelet on so you can go to the edge there if you want i think i'm going to do that and i'm going to get it just in there now you will get a bit of a bunching going on because it's fabric so i just take my little nail scissors because they've got nice little points we'll need, that. we'll need that in a minute and then we've got a little hole there and then i'm putting my little eyelet in and then we can just Get that pressed. All right, there's one done. Okay, so let me do the other one really quickly. I'm going again. So we're going to take this. We're going to go a bit faster now. right so there we have it we've got our two little bits done and that's perfect right now the way i went about actually connecting this to my tassel was um the following i measured how long i wanted it to be now um i think it was nine how many I needed, yeah, it's nine for the length of the tassel. So um, I think that's what I, I did. So I had two times nine because it's for each. So you want 18, all right, and then 18 again, right. Now, um, I this then will have it like this. It leaves enough room for this double knot here. But what you need to do is you need to put one of these uh, slip knot things on each of the tassels. So what I did was I, um, I sort of met this in the middle. So I've got started at nine, go to the end, go right to the other end like that and come back so that you've got this in the middle yeah more or less i think one is longer further down than the other which is fine i wanted it like that okay so if you're wanting that like that just move it slightly to the one side more than the other we are going to have to make a knot there okay so let's just move this i think so we have them slightly sort of hanging below each other i'm going to move one to the eight and then one like that okay there or thereabouts okay i've got that overlapping because we're gonna have to make a knot there right so carefully now i'm going to take this side yeah i'm going to thread it through the eyelet and get it through there yeah 
So that's the one. And then we'll get that like that. We can then see this one. How long do I want it? Yeah, I'm going to make that a little bit shorter. Um, like that. Yes. Okay. So you can play around with it. This one is only one, two, three, four, five, seven. And that one's a nine. Okay. And then you're going to take the other corner now and thread that through there and then we'll put that right through make a little is it called a slip knot i don't know i didn't do girl guides so i'm not sure right so we've got those on the ends there like that and you've got these bits like this so what we want to do now is we want to see um where these two meet up so you want to keep them pretty smooth and smooth and then at this point here we want to make a little knot now it's tricky because we want to try and keep um everything that it's not going to be bunched up so you need to sort of just give it a pull and see where those two are going to join and it's about there so now I'm just making a normal kind of a knot <laughs> thing um, without moving it too much. Right, so I've sort of got my, my point there. It is a trial and error game. I hope my explanation makes sense to you guys. Um, and before you put it really tight, just check that when you pull those two together, you can always release it here and move it about to get it straight. Yeah, so once you've got that done, now you can give it a good pull right and cut these off the excess so i'm not going to do it too close like that all right so we now have them attached on here okay now it's just a case of finding how you want them to hang and they are good to go into your tassel now now with the tassel it was just a case of taking all the bits I wanted, these bits, lying them out. Now this board is perfect for a tassel for me because it's 18 inches and my tassels are nine inches when they folded in half. All right, so nine, like that. Um, so I use this board to lie out everything so it fits exactly start and finish and make sure I keep it like that. And then I find the halfway mark and fold it all in half. So this would go along with all my bits of lace and whatever, ribbon and, you know, all my eyelash trim or whatever it is that I'm putting in here. So that's how I did those. And that was really cute. I quite like that. Um, and because I put circles in all my kits, it was really handy. Now you can do exactly the same thing with the smaller ones for the mini journal. Yeah, exactly the same thing. So I am going to um, take some of these. So we've got four here and I'm going to use these four and do exactly the same thing. Um, and I will get back to you. With okay. Way. So I have done that with these ones and I have made this uh, just short, almost 14 uh, inches. All right, so 14 inches, what is that? Uh, look down below, I'll work that out in a minute. Right, so I have now got this ready for a mini tassel, mini journal tassel, which I've never made before, but it's the principle is the same as the large one. And I've made everything here 14 inches in length. So I've used leftover ribbons from the mini journal kit, um, quite a few of them in here and then any other bits that I had in my cupboard even had some um, Avril um, yarn from ages ago and I've just anything that matched even a bit of seam binding which I don't know where it came from um, it's all in here so everything is 14 inches in length okay so now I've got this bit which is just shorter 14 inches and I'm going to put this one 
um, down at the bottom there and this one will be shorter because when we fold it in half we want them shingled all right so now half of 14 is seven that's my fold point at the seven inch mark now what i've got is is a book ring mini book ring um i use the tim holtz ideology mini book rings um, you get loads in a pack and this is what I've used. I've only ever bought one of these packs for all my journals. Um, today I'm going to use a silver one. I usually use these but my lobster claws are short of those. So I like them to match. So we're going with silver today which is not the greatest but hey ho. These are tough. Tough to open. Oh thank goodness. Alright so you want it open like that. Uh, this is what we're going to use to attach it to the journal. Okay, so one of each of those. So what I've got is a little bit of yarn. This is Avril uh, yarn here. You can use wool. You can use anything you have. Go look in your wool collection. Scraps of that is a great thing for tassels. And we're going to use that bit there to tie it. It doesn't really matter on the length of that. Um, I think that's about 13 inches, but it's just to to sort of hold it all together you can even use some more twine or baker's twine or anything like that all right so you want to grip it at the seven inch mark okay uh, so that's the seven inch mark with your open book ring you want to put that in there like that yeah and then you want to close that over so let's do that it's very fiddly this i will be honest <laughs> it is a fiddly thing right try and keep it without moving it from that spot too much we can always have a trim of the tassel afterwards so you've got it like this this is really where you need three hands but we don't have that so now what you want to do keeping that in place you want to sort of make yourself <laughs> with um your spare hand and the one that you are still holding you want to make yourself sort of a halfway to a knot okay so i've just done it with my one hand and you want to thread it over there try and hold it in place now i would use avril yarn that's got about six threads <laughs> what am i like um right and just keep put that down gently and now pull that tight like that and when you've got it pretty tight make a knot to keep it tight all right, so as I said, you need a vice or an extra hand or somebody in the house to come and <laughs> hold the ring in place for you. But I've learned to do it without because I generally don't have any of those people or things about. OK, so we've got that all in place. This is still movable. Look, but it's pretty tight. OK, and um, everything is sort of all right there. I'm looking for my little dangles. There's the one. And the other one is somewhere at this side, on this side. There's the other. Okay, so we've got them there. Now, uh, what I tend to do is, because this is just me, move the dangles out the way when you do this, because you don't want to cut the strings off, all right? So I like a neat tassel. <laughs> That's just me. But you don't have to do that. So I'm just lifting those up. I'm doing a bit of a haircut on it now. So I like to sort of pull it down. And anything that's too long here is going to get a haircut. And be careful of your fingers. I have many scars from cutting hair <laughs> in this position. Right, there we go. So it's had a little trim. Okay. Now these won't be cut off. And now it's a neater dangle. All right. And this one can, you can maneuver that one to the front. Okay, and there's the other. Okay, so that's how I do that. And this can work on a bigger tassel or a smaller one. Now, all you need to do is attach this to your mini journal. So let's do that. You need an eyelet for this just to get our maneuvering in there. And gosh, it's going to be right at the top. Here we go. Gosh, that is unbelievably close but there we go right i've got my eyelet, eyelet in there let's hope that this is gonna work i can't see if i've 
Squish, my poor hand. Okay, there we go. So we've got that in there. Is that going to affect the close a bit, the closing of it? So we've got that in there. I'm going to take my little scissors and just cut off the, the little fluff from there. And then what we do is, last time that you'll have to open this, um, just to get your lobster claw in. There we go. How cute is that? How cute. Right. Um, I thought this was going to be a shorter video than it is, so I must talk faster now. Right. One other thing I wanted to show you about what to do with these small ones if you don't want to make a tassel. We have still um, got plenty of these, and I've got my little uh, one-inch punch just to cut them out quickly. So... I will have to just take off a little bit here so I'm closer to the paper. Okay, so you want to just cut these out. I'm using my one inch punch here. One inch. Again, just check on whether you do this with or without a border. That affects it just ever so slightly. What you want to do is you'll need eight of these now. So I'm just pairing them up quickly like that okay same ones together and then again you want to just give this a little bit of a dust with your ink just to get rid of any white edges that's the reason I like to do this and then I'm going to use my barely art glue for this I think hope it's going to work I haven't used it today <laughs> I mean, it does work, but um, sometimes the nozzle, you know, I'm not always uh, great at remembering to close it on time. Right, so we've got that there, and it's just a case of now checking that we're not, we're going to get these pretty much, I'm looking through the light to see, just pairing them up, right? So you want to do that to all of these. So I'm going to fast forward this so that you don't watch me doing the same thing over and over again. All right. So we've got those there now. And that looks good. What we want to do quickly is just put in some little eyelets. Now I've got extra small ones here. I need my little tweezer to put them in though. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm sure you could use the normal size ones, but... I'm going to use these smaller ones so I'm just going to take out a couple of these four of these one two three and we'll take a darker one there we go so I've got four of those um, but I'm sure the others would work as well let's give it a go so now hopefully we want to just put a little hole and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw it, one that's going to really stand out. So let's put that there, that there, and this is just going to help me. That's the straight. Right, that's just going to give me some guidance of where I need to do it. Right, and we got one. Now, I must tell you, I have had such a crazy day. Um, Abby and I, I got up late today. Um, I tend to like a little line one of the days on the weekend because every other day I start pretty early after a really late night. So it's either Saturday, but if I've got to get up early like I did yesterday <laughs> for my daughter, oh, I had to go fetch her. Uh, from a friend at 2.30 in the morning. Yeah. So it wasn't going to be that same Saturday morning that I was lying in. But um, that's kids for you, isn't it? But I wasn't going to leave her there. So I had to do it. And that left me knackered on Saturday. So, yeah, I sort of had a day. And I don't know if it's just me, but I have had a day where... 
um, I couldn't get focused yesterday. It's probably because I was tired. Um, now I'm going to just press this in place like that. Um, yeah, so I, I just couldn't get to grips with getting any much done. I was all over the place and that has carried on today. Even though I only woke up, well, half nine for me, that's really late. So I had a little sleep in today and then of course I couldn't, I've been so distracted today with everything. I had, um, I knew I had to do my video and uh, luckily I'm doing it now. I had deliveries at the door that I wasn't expecting. I had my son turn up, my daughter asking me to do something and take her somewhere washing oh my gosh and i thought am i ever going to get this done so if you're seeing this video it means i did get it done yay yeah i, I don't like being woken up um once i've got to sleep it it does throw me it does throw me that's for sure i don't like this funny black one i don't like you sorry go back i love that one Maybe thinks I'm talking to her. Oh my god, that one's landed on the floor. Oh dear, it's one of these days, guys. Right, turn over. Thank goodness for these little tweezers. Right, we're we getting there. And we'll just get him in place. Okay, so we've got those done. How cute. Now, um, I put little tabs into my mini journal. This can come out of the way. Oh no, it can't. <laughs> this, uh, when I was making it, and I do love how this journal turned out. So I've got these four tabs here, and my thoughts were that I was going to dangle these from here somehow. So we can either do it with twine or we can twine's quite nice because it's a garden journal or ribbon you know or a jump ring if you want so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to put in a couple of um of these so let's see do we want that we'll have that one i think that's about it and while i'm at it i'm just going to go like that Right, and then we're going to put in a little bigger eyelet now, hopefully, yeah, and press it down. Now, before I go and make the others, I just want to see if I've done it close enough to the edge. So let's take one of these, get some string. Because I don't think the jump thing's going to, well, I could do the jump ring, but I, I just want to make it more gardeny. So we are going to use twine. And I'm just going to make, not a bow, I'm just going to make like a little knotty thing. So I don't know how this is going to look, but this is my thinking of why I put these little circles in there. And I'm not going to make it tight. I'm just going to make a loose-ish knot like that. And then I'm going to just cut it off like that. So let me see how that looks. Oh, now will it get squashed or will it lie flat? And then it'll be okay, I think. Yeah. Okay, so that looks cute, doesn't it? And it looks gardeny because we use a lot of string in the garden. It's rusticy, but still bright. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the next tab. The tabs are in the mini journal uh, kit as well. I'm just going to grip this up a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. There. And we want a little. I think these ones came from Craftelier. 
I've got so many eyelets in here that I've collected over the years from my scrapbooking days. Who knows where they come from? But the ones I usually order now, so like these, and well, these come from somewhere else, which I've forgotten now. On Amazon, that's I can tell you. So I'm going to do this quickly. Yes, yeah, so I was distracted today. All sorts getting... Uh, was happening today but that's just how it is sometimes isn't it right i i'm not going to put a bright one in i'm going to find one that's a little bit yellow we'll use that one and stick it in there so i quite like how this is turning out here's those scrappy bits i had over here it is okay use up the scraps we want that in there we want it in there and we want to tie a little knot all righty so we have got our little tassel bits in there which is so cute isn't it so we've got those in there and i love those um so that's one option um and then the other is how cute is that how cute is that? I just love that. And it's, it really looks in the garden theme, you know, with the string and everything. And yeah, you've got your little bits of paper garden jewellery going on there. Journal jewellery. Adorable. And then it'll all close up really nicely if you just tuck them in. Tuck that round. Go like that. And this around here. There we go. Look how pretty it is. Oh, there's the one, there's the other. And that's our little project today. And of course, here are the bigger ones. Yeah, these are amazing and they look great in a tassel, I just think. So, or you could have this tie little knot. Uh, instead of that knot, you could tie a knot at the top of your journal with a little eyelet and have this as a, a like a bookmark, a place mark for in your in your journal so there we go right everyone that's my sunday video for today i hope that you've enjoyed it and feel inspired to give these a little go i quite like how they worked out a little bit of extra to add to our journals always makes all the difference i love the little 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 tweaky bits that we add right take good care of yourselves i'll see you on tuesday i'm going to go through a full make of how i constructed this journal for you so how all the bits work together and we'll do that on tuesday wednesday depending of course where you live in the world my usual slot all right thank you so much don't forget if you wanted any of these bundles um that i've used to decorate it as i shared with you the ribbon and lace bundle it works perfectly for this but of course if you're wanting the bits that, um, I mean, it all matches with the large journal as well. So there's that. I also have um, fabric covers pieces that I use to make my large journal. So if you're wanting one of these fabric cover pieces, which is 11 by 18 inches, um, this exact one, then I have those uh, for sale in my website shop as well. All right, as as are the ribbon and lace bundles, and the kits are available in Etsy or in, or in my website shop, of course, on offer. So there you go. Right, everyone, have a great Sunday. I'll see you Tuesday. Thank you so much for all your support and kindness. You're amazing. Bye bye. <laughs>